My name is Ronnie Strickland. You may know me as Cuz. Now, I've been with Mossy Oak since the beginning. And yes, it's a great job. If you can call it a job. The best part, other than getting to hunt all the time and call it work, is the people. From Toxie Hayes, the founder, to everyone at Mossy Oak, and hunters in general, man, they just get it. It being the real reason we do this. It's not the big antlers or long beards or getting your limit every time. It's way more than that. I think I started at Mossy Oak July 1st of 2000, so so it's going on almost 12 years. And uh, you know, when I started, I started out as a just basic videographer. Cuz hired me at the at the shot show. I was going around like a bum trying to get a job. We hired uh, Dustin. I call him Shed, and uh, he uh, from the get go was kind of. He was kind of a lone wolf. When I came on board Mossy Oak Productions, one of the first people I got to know was Shed, Dustin Whitaker. He kind of taught me how to run the camera. I guess back in the day, they didn't give you much training, and, and Cuz was like, hey Shed, go in the back room and uh, teach Stephen how to run a camera. And, and uh, I guess it was about eight years ago. And, and basically all he showed me was, here's a record button, here's how do you focus it, and that was pretty much it. So here's a guy that when I first get hired on, you know, I'm green as they come. And, you know, basically just knew how to film hunts, but didn't know nothing about making TV shows in the professional grade that we do. And Shed was pretty hardcore. I can remember thinking, gosh, this guy's, you know, rough and tough around the edges, kind of mean sometimes, and kind of hardcore, intense type of dude. And uh, it took us, uh, you know, a trip or two together to kind of break the ice. And just like, you know, anytime you meet somebody new, you got to get to know them a little bit. He's a good guy. Once you get to know him, he just, uh... He's different, you know, he's a Yankee from up north, and uh, I think he's he's slowly, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, getting southern-fied. You know, he's just real intense. Now, over the years, he's calmed down. Thank goodness, he found him a good southern girl, and now he loves sweet tea and cornbread and grits, and he's done, he's, he's calmed down a lot, which made him a way, way better person. Not that he was a bad person, just a little too intense in the get-go. Hey, I brought you something. It's because me and you were tight now. I got a sausage meat muffin. And a McGriddle. I ain't real fond of the McGriddles, but I know you are. You know, Shed, he's uh he'll he'll be the first one to tell you, you know, how good of a hunter he is and all this. You know, he he claims to be Daniel Boone mixed with Jeremiah Johnson. Wind is not a factor. <laughs> These deer down here, they don't smell. You know, I, I've never claimed to be, you know, I am what I am. I, you know, I've, I've missed plenty of deer. I don't, I don't claim to be the greatest woodsman in the world by any stretch. But well, you're gonna hear Yawk because he's gonna ramble <laughs> like he's giving a sermon. What about old Yawk in the tree stand? I hope so. What's he like? He's a little dry. <laughs> well, <laughs> He Absolutely. knows a lot about Nintendo <laughs> games and IBM computers. He don't know much about the woods, but he's gonna tell you he. <laughs> I know. Uh, he and I got paired up on our fir first full frame hunt, which was a show we had with the uh, with the field producers, all the guys that ran camera and all that. We had the chance to go down to Hickory Hills, and uh, it's kind of South Mississippi, down past Jackson. It's a phenomenal place if, you, if you're gonna hunt in the South, but. Uh, we, we kind of struggled, after, it was an afternoon hunt, and uh, I was muzzleloader hunting, and Yach was filming me. Uh, so I got paired up with him, and you know, I, I, you know, I openly admit, I know a lot more about computers and stuff like that than I do about broadheads and you know, calibers and all that stuff, but getting paired with him was, a, was, was pretty eye-opening on uh, you know, what to do. I guess when I was green, I thought he did a lot of things right but the more I look back at it it was quite the opposite but 
Uh, anyway, you know, he, he would always say, all I know anything about is Nintendo and IBM computers. And uh, so be it, maybe so, maybe he's right, but you know, it was, uh, it was all in good fun and you know, it was a blast hunting with him for that week for sure. Did you bring anything to drink? I forgot, I didn't know I was on drink detail. I didn't bring nothing either. I need some water. I got in there with Yach and uh, they said they'd been seeing some pretty nice deer and we hadn't actually been in there but about an hour, hour and a half and saw some smaller deer trickle through and, and looked up on the hill and as soon as I saw it I knew it was a nice deer. I didn't know how big it was but I knew it was something we were going to shoot. Inside the Obsession is brought to you by Ram Truck Brand Precision Shooting Equipment Lethal and Mossy Oak. Yeah, tell me about your shoes you got there, bro. These are my dairy farm shoes. I go home, I'm gonna melt some cows. That's all I could afford with some twelve dollar boots. Cuz hired me, and I think I called the office about fifty times to figure out when I would start. And every time I called, Cuz said he had a meeting. He was in a meeting. Oh, he's in a meeting. And, you know, it was either maybe they were trying to give me a hint that they uh, weren't really going to hire me, but they were trying to put me off uh, until they had, you know, kind of a plan in, in place. Hey, I hear something over here on the Owl Office. Squirrel or something, but I hear something. It's a deer. It's a deer. I just seen his back over there. It's a good deer. It's a shooter. Watch him. He's going, if he comes down off his hill, if he comes down off his hill, there's a ditch right there. I don't know how deep it is. But I'm hoping he'll feed right up to this green field. They're probably, he's probably gonna come this way. I don't see nothing else with him. He's just by himself. He's a big, wide deer. He's got a, he's got a light-colored red. Man, he's a good one. Man's he wide. There he comes. He's coming off that hill. Put my binoculars up. If he gets down on this bottom, I'm gonna shoot him. deer was kind of coming off a, a hill towards us and I kept telling Yach I could see it he couldn't see it and you know if you've ever ran camera the kind of the key to it is you're going to be on the same page as the hunter and you want to be able to talk to that guy and tell him when you know you're going to shoot and most of the times if, you, if you're being filmed for something the camera guy is going to call your shot so as this deer would come down Yach would say I can see it I can see it and I'd say I can't see it and you know the way we were sitting had been in some, the left side of us I think was some planted pines that had been thinned and then we had some hardwoods. It was one of them things where just the deer was in and out of trees and we really, you know, I couldn't see him and y'all could see him. When I could see him, y'all couldn't see him. And, you know, it's frustrating and, you know, it, you know, there comes a point in time when, you know, this deer's a pretty nice deer, especially from Mississippi. I didn't know how big he was, but I, I knew he was, was really nice. And Yach's going back and forth, and, and after about five minutes of that, I'm ready to just turn around and choke Yach, because I could have killed the deer probably half a dozen times, but Yach couldn't see him.
Man, I knew he was wide. Man, he is funky. Man, I don't. That's the first time I deer hunted all season. Man, I bet he's 20 inches wide. Man, I know one thing that is one of the most intense hunts. It's fun when you video and you, you're filming and you got to deal with somebody telling you, no, wait, stop, I can't see him. And you're trying to have the person shoot when the deer's in the opening. But to be put in that situation, well, the first time that deer went away, I was ready to just strangle you. Strangle you, Yawk, but man, it all worked out in the end. I was sitting there thinking, either strangle Yawk or something good's gonna come out of this. And boy, something good did come out of it. You know, the headache where, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, and it kept on going and going. Yawk's the hero, man. De dealing all with all that, no, wait, stop, <laughs> keep me calm down. I said it's gonna be hero or zero. We had to make something happen, so. Right, Most intense hunt I've probably ever been on. <laughs> hey. Smoky. Congratulations. Good Lord. The camera guy's there to get a certain amount of footage and, and a, accomplish a goal to make a television show and, and basically you're just a trigger man. And when he says he can shoot him, that's when you get to shoot. And uh, sometimes it, it, it's fun and then sometimes it, it can be nerve wracking and then there's times that deer's just gonna walk away and you're never gonna get a shot. Man, Dustin Shed, yeah, I tell you what, he's a unique guy. I never will forget when he rolled into town the first time. We were, I was young, he was young, and I pulled up at the, there's only a couple red lights in West Point now, so I pulled up at one of them, and there was this black, jacked up truck with bow hunting and hunting stickers all over it, and I, they turned in front of me, and I looked at that guy, and I said, but she's going to work for us. Shed showed up down here from Ohio in a jacked up black pickup truck with gangster music blaring. From the get-go, he wanted all the tough assignments. He wanted to go to Alaska by himself and do this by himself. And that's fine, well and good. You know, he's just real intense. Now, over the years, he's calmed down. He has, he's got him a Southern girl now, and he moved from television over to marketing. And, and Shed's a good guy in marketing. He has to deal with budgets and stuff now. And if Shed thinks it, he'll say it. So he's a good guy to tell yes or a good guy to say no, but he has, it's been fun to watch the transformation of what he was when he pulled up here that day in his jacked up pickup truck to what he is now. He has, he has calmed down a lot. We had got the, the chance to go to Texas one year and um, the thing about Texas is it's just so many deer and it's so much fun to hunt, especially bow hunt. If you're a bow hunter and you get the chance to go to Texas and you lived in the south or you've lived in the, in the north in certain places where the deer are really spooky, Texas is it's, it's a whole different beast. And it's a great place to go shoot TV because you're gonna see a lot of animals. Kai had a set up in a, in a little uh, oak flat. There was oaks, little oak mont to the right and a little oak mont to the left. And, and uh, the deer were kind of feeding back through in the morning. If you watch television, most people, in, when, if they're hunting in Texas, are either killing big giant deer or they're shooting management deer. And part of that reason is these ranches are so controlled and so managed, they know what deer is coming where, with, especially with these days with the uh, help of trail cameras. It's amazing how people keep track of what deer's going where. And on the, when we went down to Kai's, we were basically shooting management deer. And uh, you know that morning, as the deer were filtering through, there was a real nice eight point that Kai had told us about and said, hey, I want you to shoot this deer if he comes by. The camera stand was set up right over Shed's shoulder. I mean, it was a perfect setup. And we looked and we saw one we thought was a nice one, you know, identified him as a shooter. and. Uh, I was standing the whole time when I was videoing and Shed was standing and he was ready and I was videoing the deer and the deer came in and you draw it. 
And I'm fixing to draw back and all of a sudden I hear this little commotion and then I hear, wait, what? And I turn around and Rusty was filming me and he dropped a white balance card. And I bumped the seat and knocked the card off the seat and it clanged down the ladder and all that stuff. And the deer didn't come unglued, but they knew they heard something that wasn't normal. So they, they pretty much spooked and, and left. And, and I can just remember the look Shed gave me. He just turned and looked at me like, what in the heck did you just do? You just screwed my hunt all up and everything. And I just, I kind of felt bad, but and it was, it was pretty early on in my career here at Mossy Oak and I was pretty new still. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this guy's mad. He's going to punch me out the tree. You know, at the time, it's a little frustrating. <sighs> I've sat right there where Rusty's sitting and, and uh, made plenty of mistakes. Sometimes I hide them better than others, but, you know, the, the, the at the time, you kind of want to turn around and choke him, but. <sighs> Inside the Obsession is also brought to you by Remington Arms and Ammunition, Mossy Oak, Scott Archery, Schwacker Broadheads, and come here, dear. I get the opportunity every year to go to Kentucky. Uh, my boss, Ben, lives in Kentucky and works out of his home, and he's got some of the best deer hunting in the world. And the first part of September every year, he invites me to come up. All right, that's Rocky. You got a good look at him now. Yeah, it ain't gonna be hard to figure him out. <laughs> you want no trouble mixing him up with somebody else. The ugliest else. deer I've ever seen, but <laughs> I'll shoot him in a heartbeat. Well, I'm gonna go shoot my bow a couple times and good. take off. Sounds good. A couple months before I went up there, Todd, who was one of the guys that hunts up there and helps Ben with, with cameras and stuff, showed me a picture of this deer and his nose was, it looked like somebody actually hit him in the face with a ball bat. And they were like, yeah, so-and-so, they called him Rocky. But his nose, if you looked at it, it just kind of had this weird hook to it. It was a pretty cool looking deer. And I, you know, I don't care about school or any of that kind of, you know, I just like shooting big deer, cool deer. And he had a bunch of cool points. And I was like, hey, if you ain't got anybody who wants to shoot him and he's still hanging out where he's at, I'll shoot him. This will work. Home sweet home. Home sweet home, buddy. It's already starting to rain a little bit. That's why we're gonna get in the barn tonight. You can kind of see how these valleys are mm -hmm. here. They're just gonna come right around these barns. Not much they can do. Works for me. Well, let's get on in here. I'll show you where we're gonna be tonight. The setup was between two big hills right on the Ohio River and the deer is actually coming down this ravine and he's got to walk five yards on either side of a barn. So I was actually sitting inside of a barn in a hay mound about 30 yards from this deer where he was coming out. And it's kind of a, you're sitting there and you think, you know, I'm kind of in the open a little bit. I got a little bit of hay in front of me. And, but if you get out and look back in the barn, the barn's black. So there was, he wasn't going to see in there and we had the wind right. Me and, me and Buck set up in there and, and uh, we, we hadn't been there about an hour. And uh, he had, Rocky had a couple buddies that uh, hung out with him and, and uh, they showed up. And of course, Rocky was, you know, he was kind of in charge. But if when you first see him, he looks so, I don't know how to, he I mean, literally looks like a car hit him in the face.
got lucky, made a pretty good shot, and he, he ran up over the hill, and uh, we got up there and found him, and you know, he's just such a, he had all kinds of points. He's one of the coolest deer I ever shot. Look at that, look at his face. Look at that nose on that guy. Man, I've never seen anything like that. He's been <laughs> like that for two years, though. Now I don't know why you called him that. Look at that, he got trash. Look at all that daggone trash velvet. Double main beam coming out the back. That is really cool. Man, that's one of the coolest deers I've ever shot. Hands down. And the first deer I ever shot out of a barn. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> buddy. When, when I started, you know, one thing that always stuck in my mind, the first day I started, I got in, you know, he set me down in his office and he's going over everything. And he said, just once you realize that you, know, you left your family to come down here and this is your family now. And you know, at the time, I, that really doesn't resonate, but after being here 12 odd some years, you start to realize that, that you know, when if I go talk to Cuz about something or Toxie or Bill or some of these other guys, I talk to them about a lot of stuff that goes on in my life and and yeah, they've kind of been become like mentors and father figures and, and it's pretty uh, you know interesting that you know to see how all my relationships have grown with those guys over the years. Showing these southern boys how to kill these white tail. It's something that you know one time I probably took for granted I don't anymore because it's you know they've become you know just family to me. Well come on and help my brother out. What are friends for huh? That's right.